everyone. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Robin Kerno, live from CNN World News headquarters here in Atlanta. So we begin with this breaking news out of Beirut, Lebanon, where the Prime Minister is pointing to a warehouse full of ammonium nitrate as the likely cause of this huge explosion. Just devastating images there out of Beirut. We know the blast killed at least 78 people and wounded more than 4,000 others. Both of those numbers are sure to rise as officials say many people are still missing. Well, the Prime Minister has declared a national day of mourning in the country and he is promising a thorough investigation. What happened today will not pass without accountability. Those responsible will pay the price for this catastrophe. Facts will be announced about this dangerous warehouse, which has been present since 2014 for six years. I will not preempt the investigations. The time now is for dealing with this catastrophe. Well, CNN's Ben, ben Wiedemann was in the CNN Beirut Bureau on Tuesday evening when this explosion happened. Here is his report. Ben. It felt like an earthquake, and it looked like a mushroom cloud. The explosion in Beirut Tuesday, so massive, it shook the ground all the way to Cyprus, 150 miles away. The level of devastation is still being assessed, with widespread destruction stretching for miles from the epicenter near Beirut's port. Firefighters and emergency workers rushed to the scene, one that the city's governor, Marwan Aboud, described as resembling Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Local hospitals were immediately inundated with hundreds of victims, and the Lebanese Red Cross put out an urgent call for blood donations. The casualty count staggering. Thousands injured and dozens dead, with the number of dead surely to rise in the hours to come. Initially, the state news agency attributed the cause of the blast to a fire at a fireworks warehouse, but shortly afterwards, the head of Lebanese security said the explosion happened at the site of confiscated high-explosive materials. Lebanon's Prime Minister Hassan Diab later said it is unacceptable that a shipment of an estimated 2,750 tons of ammonium nitrate was stored in a warehouse near the port for six years. That is the country launched an investigation into the cause, expecting an initial report in the coming days. The Lebanese president has ordered military patrols in the wake of the incident in a country already on its knees due to a failing economy and the spread of COVID-19. The Lebanese prime minister has announced that Wednesday will be a day of mourning. Ben Wheatman, CNN, Beirut. Thanks, and we'll get more from Ben a little bit later on in the show. Meanwhile, we do know that hospitals in and around Beirut are inundated with the wounded. A security source tells Reuters many victims were taken outside the city for treatment. Ambulances were brought into the capital from the north and the south of the country, we understand. Presidents are said to be scouring the hospitals looking for family and friends. Hey, uh my nephew is 29 years old from 7 in the evening we've been all over every hospital in Beirut and now we are waiting for the names to come out and nothing has come out we don't know if he is dead or alive we just don't know we have at least 300 wounded in the hospital right now we have six operating suites that are still operating right now and this keeps filling up with another group that needs attention we have about four to five in intensive care we have three that arrived dead every one of our crew doctors and nurses are operating even administration everyone is working well, I want to go straight now to Jamana Karachez following these developments from Istanbul. And Jamana, I know we've got live pictures coming in to CNN and uh, it's morning, early, very early morning there in Beirut. And these images that we're seeing now, as you can see, daylight, uh, you know, people waking up to this devastation. And, and those of us who've covered stories, this looks like a tsunami or even a nuclear wasteland. The, the devastation, the, the breadth of this is just utterly staggering. 
You know, in the words, Robin, of um, our producer in Baghdad, in, in Beirut, it's yes. as if you're talking about thousands of car bombs that have detonated across Beirut. The level of destruction is unimaginable. Um, you know, speaking to colleagues, to friends in Beirut yesterday, almost everyone, their apartments across the city have been impacted. You know, you had a number of different uh, aid groups uh, warning about the impact this is going to have. They're warning about what this may have caused because we still don't know uh, the reason scale of devastation uh, you know how many people have actually been killed because so far according to the government they say that about 78 people were killed and thousands of others injured but there are so many people who are still unaccounted for people are looking for their loved ones save the children warning that there are children who are unaccounted for they're talking about entire streets that have been wiped out uh, in this devastation and you know people are going to be uh, you know once the dust settles from this of course we will be able to find out more about uh, the the uh, real scale of this horrific uh, incident uh, Robin and so many people are going to be asking questions as you heard there in Ben's uh, report we still don't know what actually caused the explosion but you have the Lebanese Prime Minister saying that uh, you know 2,750 tons of ammonium nitrate had been stored uh, in a warehouse in Beirut for years um, you know, this is uh, this is a substance that is used in fertilizer bombs. It's been used in terror attacks in the past. Why was it stored uh, in a facility like this in the middle of the Lebanese capital is what so many Lebanese people are asking. They're asking for accountability. We've heard that from the government saying that they will hold accountable whoever is uh, responsible for this. But, you know, Robin, the biggest tragedy here is that Lebanon at the best of times uh, struggles to cope with situations situations like this. So if you look at the level of devastation, the state of the country's services uh, right now in the midst of a pandemic where we've heard that hospitals were already, uh, government hospitals were reaching capacity, um, you know, there's a lack of basic services, including massive power cuts in the capital uh, in recent weeks and recent days. So they're really going to be struggling to provide uh, for the injured, for the people who probably lost their homes in this mm. uh, incident. And that is why the Lebanese government has been calling for help and support from the international community. Of course, we've heard from various countries saying that they're going to be sending in uh, field hospitals, sending in aid and support. And I tell you, the Lebanese are going to need that now. They certainly are. And for many of us who spend time in Beirut and love it, if you could